Hey, 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 Grand Center friends, Bob here, back down in the MD again. Uh, another little Bob talk, my random crazy thoughts in my head, and a uh, word of encouragement. So, if you think about a pendulum that swings, or a ride that you've been on where you go wildly to one side and wildly to the other, it seems like the opinions about where this whole thing's going to end up, and when we're going to get together, and what we can and can't do, and how our summer's going to look, are swinging us from one end to the other. It's interesting that for me, I'm feeling more and more like I have to be grounded somewhere and hear both sides and kind of understand their opinions, but realize that they're just opinions. Know what's just a wild guess and what's maybe a little bit of a conspiracy theory. Uh, and then see where I need to put my feet and where I need to walk and where my trust needs to be every day. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that today and the importance of your quiet time. I was thinking back to some big life events that we had, uh, having kids sticks out in my mind. I remember we were in our first church and we told people we were pregnant and all of a sudden all these stories came along about how horrible delivery was or this happened to my sister or uh, they, they would just talk about extreme cases. And today we now have the, the Google, the internet, and you can look up and find stories about just about everything. And you're never sure what to believe and what not to believe. Here's what I want you to know. That the quiet time that you have in the Word of God has become more important than ever before. Uh, now, if you had a good pattern, it's easy to expand on it or get back to it, even though the disruption of your rhythms probably has set you off a little bit and you've got to get back to it intentionally. If you hadn't had a good rhythm before, uh, it's really, really difficult, but let me tell you what it does. If you take those three images, like hearing and seeing and choosing to walk, uh, this gives you absolute context and health as you go forward. Uh, now, you, you hear from God, you hear from His Word. You're able to see and have lies exposed and understand that even in man's opinion, God is in charge. And you're able to decide that day what you need to do. So, I want you to know that you need to spend a little more time in the Word than you were before, and that to do things well, you're going to have to uh, be intentional about it. And so, for your consideration, I've got five things here as you look at expanding your quiet time, or maybe even starting one, just for you to consider. First, how are you made? I know people who love singing a chorus over and over and over. They call it 7-Eleven worship, seven, seven words, 11 times. Um, others like me who would go, I meant it the first time, I reinforced it the second time, the third time I'm just repeating myself. Both of us were made by God. For some, the repeated declaration of truth takes them deeper and deeper into it. How did God make you? And what should you include in your quiet time? Do you need art? Do you need music? Do you need some of the theological expressions that have stood the, the depths of time, figure out how you learn best and start to define your quiet time around that. Secondly, know your environment. Uh, it is impossible to have a time of aloneness with God and listening if you don't understand the best environments for you. When am I emotionally at my best? Uh, what is my best listening spot? I love having a little place in the house, a chair, a place that I go and it's almost like muscle memory where you get trained, when I go here, this is when Jesus and I meet. And this is when I pour things out to him. Thirdly, manage your expectations. They say disappointment is the difference between uh, what I expected and my reality. And if you expect that every time you're going to feel this deep abiding intimacy or have a flash and a word of inspiration, that may not be the case. But you will see that over time, this is exposing lies and reinforcing truth and giving you wisdom in walking forward. Manage your expectations. Don't give up. Which leads me to number four, persevere. Uh, saw some friends run on a treadmill the other day and uh, somebody that said, I'm going to start dieting and exercising and they weighed themselves the first day after they tried and they weighed the exact same amount and they were so disappointed. And you said, well, of course, you have to have this as a pattern and a routine in your life to get the benefit. Uh, you need to persevere, even when it's awkward, even when it takes away from your sleep. And in fact, sometimes you need to linger longer in the presence of God when you're waiting on Him to meet you wherever it is you're going to Him. 
And finally, share your decisions. You're going to hear things and make decisions about how to walk. Tell your spouse, get some other people in community, be accountable to the things that you're learning in your quiet time. Hey, I love you. I want you to be healthy through this. And so I wanted to share this with you. Let me finish with Psalm 119, 92 to 94. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you've given me life. I am yours, save me, for I have sought your precepts. Blessings, my friend. We'll talk later.